The royals who were marginalized, from the queen's severely disabled cousins to Victoria's grandson with a troubling fate. Throughout history, there have been members of royal families who were kept at a distance, although for vastly different reasons. Catherine and Nerissa Bowsleon, the severely disabled cousins of the late queen, were placed in an asylum and falsely reported as deceased since 1963, despite being very much alive. Prince John, the youngest child of King George V, lived away from the public eye at Sandringham's Wood Farm due to his severe epilepsy. And Prince Charles Edward, Queen Victoria's grandson, was sent to Germany during his teenage years, where he became involved with nazism and ultimately died penniless, stripped of his English titles and honor. These figures are seldom discussed today, serving as symbols of a time when perceptions of illness were far from what they are now, and when disability was seen as a family's shame. Nerissa was born in February 1919, with her sister arriving seven years later. It quickly became apparent that they had severe disabilities. Their father, John Herbert Bowsleon, was one of the future Queen Mother's brothers. Tragically, the couple had already lost their first daughter early in their marriage. During the era when Nerissa and Catherine were born, mental disability was stigmatized, casting a shadow over families. John Bowsleon, devastated by his daughter's condition, passed away at the young age of 44 in 1930. The public only learned of the sisters' tragic story in 1987, after Nerissa's passing the year before. Journalists discovered that she had been buried in an unmarked grave, identified only by a plastic name tag and a serial number, MIII-25. The sisters were even listed as deceased in the 1963 edition of Burke's Peerage, claiming that Catherine had died in 1961 and Nerissa 19 years earlier. Initially, they were sent to Arniston School in Hemel Hempstead, Hertfordshire, an institution established for handicapped children from high society backgrounds. In 1941, following the outbreak of World War II, Nerissa and her sister were transferred to the Royal Earlswood Asylum for Mental Defectives in Reed Hill, Surrey. Nerissa remained at this institution for the rest of her life. Earlswood was the first purpose-built asylum for people with mental disabilities, but conditions were far from today's standards. Patients only received their own clothes when they had visitors, and there were allegations of abuse by former staff members. Remarkably, Catherine and Nerissa were admitted to Earlswood on the same day as their maternal cousins Etheldreda, Idonia, and Rosemary, the daughters of Coldstring guardsman Henry Fane and his wife Harriet Trefusis. While Rosemary passed away in the early 1970s, her sisters continued to share a ward with the Bowsley and sisters. Family visits dwindled over time as Catherine and Nerissa were unable to communicate effectively. Speaking in a 2011 Channel 4 documentary, a nurse named Onel Braithwaite, who cared for the sisters, noted that they would curtsy when the queen or queen mother appeared on television, suggesting some memory remained. She expressed sadness about the life the sisters might have had with today's advancements in speech therapy. Dot Penfold, a former ward sister, added that while the sisters were not difficult to care for, they had mischievous and playful personalities, much like naughty children. The Daily Mail revealed in 1987 that the Queen Mother had only been informed of the sisters' continued existence in 1982. Upon learning of their situation, she promptly offered support and sent gifts. The depiction of the sisters and their treatment in the Netflix series, The Crown, stirred frustration among their relatives. In the series, Princess Margaret discovers their existence and is appalled, leading to a tense exchange with her mother, who reflects on the family's dramatic transformation from minor Scottish aristocrats to having a direct bloodline to the crown, resulting in a high price paid by her brother's children. Their illnesses, their intellectual disabilities, their professionally diagnosed idiocy and imbecility raised questions about the integrity of the royal bloodline. Imagine the headlines if this were to become public. The concept that one family has an automatic birthright to the throne is already difficult to justify. The gene pool of that family must be 100% pure, remarked an insider. The Windsor family alone has had enough instances to cause concern, and if you add the Bowsley and illnesses to that, it becomes even more problematic. 
However, David Bowes Leon, 73, whose father was a first cousin of the Queen Mother once removed, dismissed this storyline as complete fantasy. He asserted that Margaret was fully aware of the girl's existence and knew all about them. Catherine outlived her sister by nearly two decades, passing away at the age of 87 in 2014. She was relocated to a care home in Surrey after Earlswood closed in the 1990s. A mischievous young prince hampered by illness. Exactly a month before Nerissa's birth, when the Bowsland family was still known only as Scottish aristocrats, the youngest child of King George B passed away away from the public eye. Thirteen-year-old Prince John, who had been suffering from epilepsy since his early years, died due to a severe seizure at Wood Farm on the Sandringham estate. He had been sent there after his epileptic fits became more frequent and severe. During that era, there was hardly any treatment available for epilepsy, and those afflicted with the condition received little sympathy. He transitioned from actively participating in public family life to living in isolation, with his parents visiting him less and less as his condition failed to improve. The Daily Mail's obituary of the youngster described him as a prankster, earning him the nickname The Demon. On one occasion, he playfully smeared paint on his face from his sister Princess Mary's paint set and barged into a lunch party held by his parents at Sandringham. Another incident saw him climb into a car and attempt to start it, but he was rescued unharmed. John's life story was portrayed in the award-winning TV drama The Lost Prince in 2003. The beloved grandson who embraced Nazism, Prince Charles Edward, the Duke of Albany, grandson of Queen Victoria, was another royal who was kept at arm's length by his family. Born at Claremont House in Surrey in 1884, the prince was Queen Victoria's favorite grandson. Despite not speaking German, Victoria made him the Duke of saxe coburg and Gotha, the principality where her late husband, Prince Albert, had come from when he was just 16. He was forced to leave his home to take up his dukedom, which included control over 13 castles in Germany and Austria, hunting lodges, a power station, and thousands of acres of farmland. The Kaiser married Charles Edward to his niece, Victoria, and sent him to enroll in Germany's top military academy. When World War had broke out in 1914, Charles Edward found himself fighting for Germany, despite being thoroughly British. His woes multiplied when King George V, under political pressure, changed the family name from the German Saxe Coburg Gotha to Windsor. Following Germany's defeat in the war, George stripped his cousin of British titles and his status as a royal highness, labeling him a traitor peer. As the Nazis rose to power, Charles Edward aligned himself with them, even meeting with Adolf Hitler in 1937. His involvement with Nazism deepened when Hitler made him president of the German Red Cross, where he oversaw a horrific program of enforced euthanasia that led to the murder of 100,000 mostly disabled people, including children. During World War II, Charles Edward's three sons fought for Germany, with one dying on the Eastern Front. After Germany's defeat in 1945, Charles Edward fell into American hands despite Hitler's warning. His sister, Princess Alice, came to Germany to find him starving in a prisoner-of-war camp resorting to scavenging for food. He was put on trial and accused of being a Nazi, and although he claimed he was unaware of the regime's crimes, the court deemed him an important Nazi, confiscating his homes and estates. Financially strained by the fines imposed on him, Charles Edward was allowed to live in a cottage on one of his estates, narrowly avoiding imprisonment due to his poor health. Unable to return to Britain, he found solace in watching a film of Queen's coronation in 1953, knowing he could have been there. Charles Edward passed away in 1954 at the age of 69, in the bed he had brought from Claremont House as a memento of England. Despite his love for his birth country, Charles Edward's association with Natesism made him a source of embarrassment for the royal family. Dear friend, if you like everything new about the royal family and don't want to miss all the novelties, subscribe to our channel and like it. By doing so, you take part in our development. We work for you.